For over a year now, my female crested gecko has been living inside of this enclosure, and it's getting way too small for her. Last week, I began the process of making her a new enclosure, starting with a custom plywood reptile enclosure. If you'd like to see a little more about how I made that, go check out my last video. I'll finish up the project by making the ultimate bioactive crested gecko vivarium. The first order of business is to make a DIY background. I started by measuring the inside of the enclosure, and then cutting some sheets of XPS foam to size. This foam is a great way to make DIY backgrounds as it's easy to carve and paint. I'm using pieces that are about an inch thick, but you can get a range of sizes depending on your preference. Anyway, after cutting all the pieces to size, I had three pieces total. One for the back, one for the left, and one for the right. Now that all the pieces are cut, I can finally start to add some texture using a wire brush drill bit. Another alternative to this would be something like a kitchen knife scraped against the surface, but the wire brush drill bit makes it a lot faster and gives better texture. Speaking of texture, what I'm trying to create here is something that resembles the bark of a tree. Once all the texture was carved in, I could seal everything with a heat gun. This will not only harden the foam, but will also help to bring out the texture. The next step is painting using some white tintable dry lock and concrete pigments. This is a great way to get color onto your DIY backgrounds and it's waterproof and I started by pouring some dry lock into a container and then adding some concrete pigments. I then mixed everything up. I made the first coat a very dark gray. I usually use a base coat like this that's dark that I can get into all of the cracks to help bring out the texture later. Once the base coat was dry, I came back with a brown color and covered the majority of the piece. The goal here is to use progressively lighter dry brush coats to help add texture and depth. After adding all of the brown color, I came back with a slightly orange color and finished everything off with a slightly white, lightly dry brushing it over the surface. After that, I had three pieces of an amazing DIY background. Before I can install it into the tank, I need to make a false bottom using some egg crate light diffuser. I started by measuring and then marking out where to cut, and then cutting it using some wire cutters. You could also use something like scissors for this, but I found wire cutters to be the best tool. Once I had all of the pieces cut, I could start to assemble them with zip ties. What I'm trying to create here is a sort of base that will act as a false bottom and allow for excess water to reside. After securing everything with zip ties, I clipped off the ends with wire cutters. As is, the holes aren't small enough to prevent substrate from getting through, so I'll use some more zip ties and attach some window screen mesh. With the false bottom assembled, I can add it into the enclosure. Normally I would just add something like Leica for this, but Egg Crate is a lot lighter and easier to install. With the false bottom in place, I can finally add the backgrounds. You'll see here that I'm not using any silicone or anything. My whole plan for this tank was to be able to make everything disassemble all the way down to the bare tank. The backgrounds are tight enough to hold themselves in place, so when it comes time for me to disassemble it, all I'll have to do is take everything out without any issues. Anyway, now that the background's installed, I can start work on the hardscape. I'm just using some extra driftwood pieces that I had lying around. I wanted to buy a piece separate for this, but all the stuff I had lying around actually ended up creating a pretty cool scape. I had to use zip ties, painting tape, and other supports to help hold up the scape. Then I could add the great stuff gaps and cracks expanding foam. This will not only hold up the scape, but it'll also help create a cohesive look between the scape and the background. After applying the foam and letting it cure overnight, I ended up with a pretty cool scape. It's still just the beginnings of one though. I need to do a little bit more work on the foam, starting by carving it with a knife. My goal here is to try and replicate the texture of the background as best I can. However, it is hard to do in such a small space. Regardless, I'll try my best. Most of this will be hidden within the foliage of the plants anyway, but I still want it to look good. After carving the foam down and doing my best to add texture, I cleaned everything up and started to paint with some more dry lock. I'm using the same technique as I did on the background, starting with a dark base coat and then using progressively lighter dry brush coats to help add depth. I added a pretty large amount of brown, and then finished things up with a little bit of orange and some more white to help add highlights. It's a little bit difficult to see from this angle, but it definitely starts to feel more cohesive once the foam is all painted. I also decided that I wanted to build a little ledge to put her food dish on. I started by placing the food dish on a piece of foam, then tracing around it and cutting out the outline. Here you can see how the food dish will sit flush with the ledge. 
I proceeded by adding some texture using a wire brush drill bit, again trying then to harden the foam with a heat gun, and begin painting. Again, this follows the same process as everything else. Once the ledge was painted, I cut a little slit into the background and attached it with super glue. With all of that taken care of, I can finally add the substrate. This is just a typical ABG mix made of one part cocoa fiber, one part play sand, one part reptile bark, and two parts phagna moss. This substrate will help retain humidity while not getting soaked and encouraging mold growth. Anyway, I added all the components in equal parts and then mixed everything up. Before adding in the substrate, I added a layer of charcoal to help prevent odor and bacteria buildup. I then proceeded to add the substrate. I had to make a few batches of it as this tank requires quite a bit of substrate to completely fill it up. And like usual when adding substrate to an enclosure like this, I made sure to slope it up to the back to help create some depth. With the substrate in place, we can now move on to my favorite part and bring it to life with the plants. Before adding them though, I need to prep them, starting by removing each plant from its pot, then breaking up the roots from the soil. I wanted to keep things simple and big with this one. Normally I would go with some smaller plants to add some detail, but she's a very destructive crested gecko and she's only getting bigger, so I need to make sure that I have big hardy plants. Not only will these plants look amazing in the enclosure, but they'll also hold up to the adorable destruction that is crested geckos. I also took this time to take some plants from her previous enclosure. I then brought them to the sink and washed them off to remove any excess soil. I then began planting. I started by planting this palm that was from her previous enclosure in the back left. Then to the right of the enclosure, I added this Swiss cheese vine. This one is one of my favorites. To the left of the Swiss cheese vine, I added a fiddle leaf fig. I then encased the roots of a golden pothos in a bag with substrate and placed it on the top right of the enclosure. This will do well here as long as it has consistent water. I then use some smaller plants to finish up the foreground. Some of you might not remember this one, but this was also from her previous enclosure. Once the planting was finished, I embellished everything with some leaf litter. This will help create a naturalistic look as well as provide some refuge and food for the springtails and isopods. Along with the leaf litter, I'll add some botanicals to further help with both those effects. Now it's time to add the cleanup crew, starting with some powder blue isopods. I then added some springtails to finish things up. With the enclosure finished, I introduced Echo to her new home. The ultimate bioactive crested gecko vivarium. I really love the way this one turned out, and I'm glad I finally got to give Echo the upgrade she deserved. I know I say this a lot, but this is definitely one of my favorite enclosures that I've set up to date. It's simple yet full of textures and amazing details. Not to mention it'll provide a great home for my crested gecko throughout the years. It's very unlikely that I'd end up doing anything bigger. I might change the tank at some point if I ever get sick of it or run into a big issue, but as of right now, I'm happy with how it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think about this build down in the comments and if you think it's better than the previous one. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you're interested in how I built the plywood enclosure, go check out my last video. Until then, I'll see you next time.